So hey, it's Jordan, Ancient Literature Dude, and I want to talk about bookstores today. And the whole experience of actually going into them and finding that book on the shelf and maybe discovering it for the first time and not knowing what it's all about. Uh, that element of surprise, I think, that maybe we lack in the digital age where increasingly we're buying books more and more online, which is not necessarily a bad thing or a problem. Uh, it's convenient in many ways. It's helped me in a lot of ways. Uh, but I do think that that whole experience of actually going into a bookstore and having that element of, of actual surprise and just the element of, of touch and, and the visual is uh, very much a lost art these days and, and coming to be increasingly so. And I just want to talk about my own experience growing up, where I went to get the books, what it was like, how excited I was, and I hope to get a discussion started about maybe uh, what your experience was like doing the same. So I believe I said before on the channel that I was really into comic books as a kid, but the first actual books that I can really remember getting into were the Goosebumps books by Arl Stein. I'm sure many of you read them, uh, especially many of you who, like me, are really into horror and things like that. Uh, I was a big fan, really looked forward to them. And uh, we went to Books A Million generally to pick them up. It was the uh, the store particularly at Cortana Mall in Baton Rouge near where I grew up. And I can still sort of remember, uh, you know, the place in the store. It was a little kind of a uh, kids or young adult section or whatever. And uh, I'll never forget that feeling of, you know, going to the store usually on a weekend and being excited and hoping that a new book would have popped up because this was before the internet, you know, for the most part, we certainly didn't have internet at the time. And uh, so I didn't have much of a clear sense of when uh, the new books were coming out. And I followed the series religiously and had read all of them. So it was a really good feeling to get there and discover that there was a new one. There was something new for you to be able to read and experience for the first time. And uh, I read those for years. A little bit later, got into uh, the Star Wars uh, Extended Universe stuff. And uh, it was around the same general time frame. So we were still going to Books A Million. But I can remember it was in a different part of the store. And I can still remember that same kind of vivid sensation of uh, going there and just hoping that, that I would find something new. That they would have something new in stock or, or even a totally newly released book in a series or whatever. And... I can also remember uh, when my family and I took uh, trips and, and vacations and things like that, that I was always excited to go into new bookstores that I had never been to before because they occasionally had books that, that I didn't already have. I remember uh, visiting my uncle in North Carolina and going into a small bookstore that I still remember pretty vividly. It was at a little strip outlet. I don't remember the name of it, but I can remember the store. And uh, they had the first book in the Black Fleet Crisis, the, the Star Wars book, uh, that I didn't have. And I was just so excited about it. So little things like that really stick out to me. Uh, the, the, the whole experience of finding a new bookstore and, and not knowing exactly what it was going to have and being excited about is something that I don't get to experience very often anymore. And I really miss that. And another bookstore that I discovered around the same time period was uh, Book Warehouse on Florida Boulevard in Baton Rouge. And Book Warehouse was a bit different uh, as compared to Books A Million. The inventory was different. Uh, they stocked comic books and trading cards and things like that for one thing. So you can imagine as a kid, I was pretty excited about that. But uh, they had a, a somewhat different inventory on just standard books as well. And... I can remember picking up quite a few Star Wars novels there. Uh, one in particular was uh, The Courtship of Princess Leia. I got it for four bucks, if I remember correctly, which is a pretty good price hardback at the time. Uh, so their prices were really good. And, and it was a store that I was very excited about visiting. And I went there every chance that I could as a kid. So around the time that I went to college, we first got a Barnes & Noble around here. And... I really enjoyed that because the selection was a little bit different and a little bit better to my taste. Uh, I was able to find and sometimes discover authors for the first time 
a lot of the, the the books that I had been reading about online, uh, I was more likely to find at Barnes and Noble. Uh, in fact, it was where I first picked up the Gorman Gas novels by Mervyn Peake, which I really enjoyed. And that Barnes and Noble was where I first got the Book of the New Sun by Gene Wolfe, which is now my favorite book of all time. So uh, I have really fond memories of it, and I've made some good pickups there, uh, especially. Uh, books of poetry and and more kind of nonfiction stuff and things like that. When I was actually in college, I didn't really have enough time to do uh, casual reading, unfortunately. So I didn't venture out very much. And the only bookstore that I went to was the local Barnes and Noble there in Lake Charles. But uh, I really enjoyed it, although I was mostly reading comic books when I read anything for fun. Uh, but it was a good, familiar atmosphere, and I still have good memories of it. But in the years since I graduated college and moved back to my hometown, uh, my tastes have become more specialized. And maybe for that reason, I've sought out different sources of books uh, beyond the ones that I get online, of course. And uh, I've discovered a great local bookstore called uh, Cottonwood Books uh, over in Baton Rouge near LSU. And I love Cottonwood because I almost always find something new and interesting every time I go there uh, because for one thing the inventory is often changing uh, it's a it's a at least partially used bookstore uh, with rare and vintage books and I've made some really cool discoveries with uh, foreign language texts and great dictionary finds there uh, foreign language dictionaries and uh, there's a really nice science fiction and fantasy section where I've been able to pick up stuff from Arthur C. Clarke and Gene Wolfe and Ursula K. Le Guin and uh, a number of others. So I'm always really excited about that. Another one is uh, Cavalier House Books in Denham Springs, which is a bit closer to me. And they're really nice because they also have a used book section and uh, it's largely the same kind of deal. I found some really interesting stuff there. Uh, I think uh, The Eye of the Heron by Ursula K. Le Guin and uh, Confessions of a Crap Artist by Philip K. Dick, which I had never even heard of before until just seeing it on the shelf. So uh, these these sort of smaller, you know, local bookstores have really been the only places that I've, that I've been able to get that experience of walking in and really genuinely being surprised in a long time, which I, I love. But as I mentioned before, as I've gotten older, my tastes have become more specialized, especially as I've become interested in uh, ancient literature and foreign languages and things like that. And so it's getting increasingly hard for me to uh, be surprised by books that I find and, and really get excited about them. And that's why I'm very glad I found the LSU Book Bazaar, uh, which I've mentioned before on the channel because it's held annually. So unfortunately, I can't just go there every other week or whatever, but uh, I do look forward to it every year because I'm almost always extremely excited about uh, the kinds of stuff that I find there. You find very rare vintage books. Uh, there's a very impressive uh, foreign language section, typically, uh, with everything from Japanese to Old Irish to the modern Slavic languages and Hebrew and Arabic and just everything in between. And, uh, of course, you know, uh, as someone who's really fascinated by that kind of stuff, I get very excited about it. And I usually leave with just armfuls and bagfuls of, of, uh, these rare and obscure books, some of which I will probably never ever use in a million years, but that's the, the joy and fun of being a book collector, right? Sometimes they just look nice and sometimes they're just a, a hopeful thing that you put on the shelf and, you know, are potentially excited about maybe one day actually cracking into. And I just love that feeling. So in any event, yeah, uh, that's about it. That's kind of the, the gist of my book journey. So I hope that you'll share uh, something of what yours has been and uh, tell me what you find exciting about getting books, whether it's in person at a brick and mortar store or digitally. Uh, ordering them online or getting them in, in digital form. Uh, because as I said, I can't lie, uh, a lot of my book purchases are made online now. Uh, 
as someone with very narrow tastes, sometimes that's the only practical and realistic way to, to get the stuff that I want. And I've been very happy with it. But I do miss that magic of going into a store. And I wish that we at least had that option more often. I wish that especially more locally owned bookstores still existed and weren't uh, going under as they often are. Uh, because it is a lost art. And I think that there's nothing quite as magical for a book lover as going into a store and not knowing exactly what it's going to hold for you and just hoping to find that one really amazing moment when you find that 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 book that you weren't expecting and maybe even didn't know existed and wondering what it's going to do for you and for your life. So in any event, I hope you found the discussion enjoyable and interesting in some way. And I hope you're doing well, as usual, and I will talk to you later.